Hi everybody, it's Dr. Spear uh, coming to you with uh, our next biometrics lecture here. I'm down here in my kind of cold uh, basement office. Uh, of course, I've got my vicious guard dog protecting me at this point. Um, so, if you hear any uh, strange sounds coming from down there, it's probably just her having a dream. Uh, so what I want to talk to you about, first is the quiz that you're going to have next week. It's going to be over all the first lectures and the first homeworks. It's going to be 10 short answer questions, two points apiece, 20 total points. So if you've got any questions about anything or any questions about the quiz, then uh, please don't hesitate to contact me. Now the next thing that we need to talk about are normality tests. We talked about the normal curve quite a bit last week and this lecture is just going to talk a little bit more about how we look for a normal curve or how we determine if a population uh, can be described by a normal curve. So you remember that I said that last week most stats require a normal distribution. And if we assume or if we know that they come from a normal distribution, we said that the normal curve is magic, you know, it's symmetrical, and we can use it to determine our p-value, the probability that we got our results or those more extreme if the null is true. And of course this is a what a normal distribution looks like, and it's an extension off of our idea of a frequency histogram. And so we can say things like, for any value, what proportion of the individuals have that value or greater? That's what the normal curve allows us to do it. This is how we can get the probabilities that we need for hypothesis testing. Okay, well, if we could measure everybody in the population, we could get our p-values directly. We would not need to assume normality. We would not need to do a lot of fancy math. In fact, later on, we'll probably do some Monte Carlo uh, randomization tests in which we'll do just this, where we don't even need to do stats. But right now, um, we know that we can't measure every individual in the population. And so to compensate, what we have to do is we have to take a sample, get the mean and the standard deviation of that sample. We also know the size of the sample. Then we assume normality. And if we assume normality, we can define a normal curve based upon that mean and that standard deviation. And if we can define the normal curve, that means we can calculate probabilities. And that allows us to calculate a p-value because we know what that normal curve looks like. Now, you notice that I say that we assume normality. Um, can we always assume normality? Uh, we looked last week and we saw that most of the, the data that we work with looks very non-normal or not as pretty as some of these normal graphs. Um, and if we can't assume it, we'd like to test for it. Well, how can we tell? How can we tell if a population is normal? So we need um, a more objective way than just looking at a graph. Looking at a graph helps, but it's not very objective. And so a couple of the properties of a curve that we want to look at are things called skewness or skewness and kurtosis. Skewness is the evenness uh, or the symmetry. Kurtosis is the peakedness. So for example here's figure 3.2c from your book and this is a curve that is skewed to the right and let me go ahead and get a pen here. Um, so when we talk about skewness you talk about where the long tail is. And so the long tail is on the right, so this is skewed right. Of course, if you got skewed right, you can also have skewed left. 
And this is uh, kurtosis. You've got leptokurtotic and platykurtotic. Uh, the basic idea is, is that, that these deviate from normality in a particular manner. Now, there are a few different ways that we can check to see if a population is normal. The first is another graphical technique called a normal probability plot. And this suffers from the same drawbacks as, uh, as what we already talked about, talked about with our graphical techniques in that it's not very objective. However, it's designed to make uh, identifying non-normal populations easy. And you'll see that in a second. There are many um, statistical tests that we can use that do one thing, and that one thing is they test for normality. The one that we're going to work with that's used a lot is called the Shapiro-Wilk test for normality. And when we're checking for um, normality, we're also kind of keeping an eye out for outliers. And we've talked about outliers before. They're basically crazy extreme values, values that are so far removed from all the other ones in your data set that they actually might be a mistake. You may have written a number down wrong, or they might belong to a different population than the rest of your data. Um, now, it's sometimes tricky, because how do you tell if something is an outlier versus just an extreme, extremely large and extremely small, or, or kind of one, one of the, the more odd individuals in the population? Um, there are some judgment calls, and there also are some standard ways to determine if something is an outlier. And we already saw that in the box plot. The R software had some criteria for determining if it considered a particular data value an outlier. So we'll look for those while we're also checking normality. Okay, so our first technique I said is graphical. It's a normal probability plot, which um, we can call a quantile-quantile or a QQ plot. And real easy to do in NOR, in uh, R. You just use the command QQ norm, and then whatever variable you're testing. So whatever variable in R contains your uh, data, you put that in the parentheses, and that will um, provide the quantile quantile data, but then you also need to add the QQ line with the same variable name to get the proper plot. And when you do that, um, let's, let's do that. Here is the histogram from the homework that you uh, should have turned in today. And so it's fish data, and it doesn't really look normal. We've got this mode kind of here at, at seven inches, and then kind of another smaller peak, and it's not a nice smooth curve like we saw in the hypothetical uh, picture from your book. And so when we run those data through R, and here you're seeing where we uh, use QQ norm on the length in inches, and then QQ line in the length in inches, and this is what a uh, QQ plot looks like. And you've got theoretical quantiles, sample quantiles, doesn't really, the axes you're not concerned with. What you're concerned with is this line and the points around that line. So the points represent uh, every single data point in that variable, in the variable length in inches. And the straight line uh, represents where they should fall if it's a normal distribution. So the more normal your distribution, the closer the points are to the line. And so does this look normal? Well, of course not. The, the points definitely do not fall close to that line. Another advantage of a QQ plot is it sometimes will indicate where your data start to deviate from normality. So you can sort of look for patterns in these points around the line and infer something about, about the, the data. This I can't infer much from it other than it looks to be not very normal. Um, this is a figure from your book. This is what it should look like if you have uh, a normal distribution. And so this is uh, slightly different, I think, than the 
way R does it, but it's the same idea. You see how these points all kind of fall close to that line? That suggests you have a normal population.